The Sanitary Commission is doing a work of great humanity and of direct, practical value to the nation in this time of its trial. It is entitled to the gratitude and confidence of the people, and I trust it will be generously supported. There is no agency through which voluntary offerings of patriotism can be more effectively made. The United States Sanitary Commission was dedicated to the comfort and care of the U.S. Army soldiers during the Civil War. Founded after the medical debacle of the First Battle of Bull Run, this civilian volunteer organization collected and distributed clothing, food, and cooking supplies to encourage hygienic living and a healthy diet and camp. The commission provided bandages and blankets for wounded and sick men, as well as professional advice on establishing permanent hospitals. Commission agents provided direct medical care to the wounded in the aftermath of innumerable battles, working hand-in-hand -hand with the Army on ambulances, in field hospitals, and aboard hospital ships. All of this required immense amounts of capital. Thankfully for the soldiers, doctors, and patients helped by the commission, vast sums of money were pouring east from the far west. California's decade-long gold rush was still underway. The gold fields provided over 25% of the Sanitary Commission's budget, even though Californians made up just over 1% of the national population. And that's not even including the territory of Nevada, where miners raised more money per capita for the commission than any other state or territory. The famous author Mark Twain was there. Money was wonderfully plenty. The trouble was not how to get it, but how to spend it, how to lavish it, get rid of it, squander it. And so it was a happy thing that just at this juncture, the news came over the wires that a great United States Sanitary Commission had been formed and money was needed for the relief of the wounded sailors and soldiers of the Union languishing in the Eastern hospitals. The most famous Sanitary Commission fundraiser came out of this hectic Western community, and it began as a bet. Rule Colt Gridley was the Democratic candidate for mayor of Austin in Nevada Territory. A local Republican named Dr. H.S. Herrick challenged Gridley in a good-natured wager. If Gridley won the election, Dr. Herrick would have to carry a 50-pound sack of flour from Gridley's grocery store from the town of Clifton back to Austin, about a mile in length. The whole way, he would be accompanied by a band playing Dixie, the unofficial anthem of the South. If, however, the Republican candidate won, Gridley would have to carry the same sack of flour over the same distance, only he would have to hear John Brown's body. Gridley lost, and his defeat was turned into a good-natured public spectacle. Miners and other citizens gathered to listen to the music and watch the procession. When he reached his destination, Gridley and the crowd didn't seem to know what to do. Mark Twain, a former schoolmate of Gridley, later recalled the event. Gridley said he did not need the flower, and asked what the people thought he had better do with it. A voice said, sell it to the highest bidder for the benefit of the sanitary fund. The suggestion was greeted with a round of applause, and Gridley mounted a dry goods box and assumed the role of auctioneer. The bids went higher and higher, as the sympathies of the pioneers awoke and expanded, till at last the sack was knocked down to a millman at $250 and his check taken. He was asked where he would have the flower delivered, and he said, Nowhere, sell it again. Now the cheers went up royally, and the multitude were fairly in the spirit of the thing. So Gridley stood there and shouted and perspired till the sun went down. And when the crowd dispersed, he had sold the sack to 300 different people and had taken in $8,000 in gold. And still the flour sack was in his possession. Soon, gold and silver mining communities throughout the West were inviting the now-famous Gridley to auction the fabled Austin Sanitary Flower Sack to them. Each stop earned more gold and silver for the commission. 6,500 in Gold Hill, 1,700 in Silver City, 12,000 in Virginia City, 10,000 in Sacramento. From San Francisco to St. Louis, Gridley hauled the white canvas sack bedecked in red, white, and blue silk ribbons. In a year, he traversed some 15,000 miles. Along the way, he leveraged merchandise to further increase the sum, including photographs of himself and his sack. 
At last, when he arrived in St. Louis at the Grand Western Sanitary Fair, Gridley cooked the flour into bread and sold each loaf. Although sources differ, some claim he raised more than a quarter of a million dollars with his sack, roughly equivalent to eight and a half million dollars in 2021. In the spirit of the Austin Sanitary Flour Sack, we here at the National Museum of Civil War Medicine invite you to join in this tradition of generosity. By becoming a member or giving a one-time donation, you can ensure that our story continues to be heard. Visit us in the link below or at civilwarmed.org to pledge your support.